Welcome back Kerbal fans, I am Sayura Burke and we are revisiting the docking tutorial, this time in 1080 and in stereo. So there have been a lot of updates to the game. Uh, they've fixed a few things, made things a lot easier. Some of the burn times have changed a little bit, if I recall from the last time I did this video. We will address all of those changes and I'll be answering a question from the uh, previous video. So let's get to it. So once again, I'm not gonna be reading all these to you. I'm sure you've read them many, many times. I'm just going to go over what I'm doing, why I'm doing it, and so forth. First thing I always do is I move this little handle to the upright position. It's actually a, a pipe, but it helps me to orient the ship for uh, maneuvers later. So it wants you to go to map mode, to click on the stranded and set it as target. Now it points out the ascending and descending nodes. We are going to right click the descending node because it's out of the way and it'll show us the degrees. And we're going to place our maneuver at the ascending node since it's the closest. All right, so this will be an anti-normal burn. I'm going to drag it down. Take your time, go slow. Ease off when it starts to spin like that. It doesn't look like I'm going to hit zero, so I'm going to back it up a little bit. Bring it down a little more. Oh, there we go. All right. So, uh, as far as the question from the last video, uh, one of my viewers asked, uh, why don't I use the maneuver mode? You can, actually. I, I've checked it out. It works great. Uh, I'm pretty sure it's more intended for when you're doing multiple types of maneuvers at the same time, like a radial in, maybe an anti-normal, and a prograde burn all at the same time to achieve a specific effect. Um, if you're doing that, you obviously can't choose an individual burn because you won't achieve that that goal. So you'd use maneuver and it will position your ship in just the right angle to make those three different types of burns all at the same time. Since I'm not doing multiple types of burns, I'm just doing one type every single time, I usually go ahead and just use anti-normal. As soon as I delete this node, the maneuver will disappear anyway, so it's not like I can click maneuver and leave it there uh, every time I start a new maneuver, it'll start fresh. So uh, I'm just going to use anti-normal. If you prefer to use maneuver, by all means, go for it. It will work. I haven't had any problems with it. All right, so it is now a 24 second burn. They fixed that little deal where it wouldn't show your burn time right away and you'd have to give a little prograde kick for a second and then it would show your time. But that's fixed, so we don't have to worry about that. So we're going to switch to anti-normal. Since it's a 24 second burn, we're going to start at minus 12 and burn through. So let's uh, speed it up. Now, with it being a short hop, I don't like to use the warp to here. Uh, yes, for this particular burn, uh, your ship stays in its position quite easily. It doesn't need to to correct after your uh, time warp. Uh, other burns later on, it, once you go into time warp, it stops reorienting your ship. So you have to give it a little time to make that correction. If you come out of time warp right before your burn, you're going to be facing the wrong direction. It'll be bad. So since I'm not going to use warp to here, you can either click up here. That's a little inefficient. So I'm going to use period to speed up. That's full stop for those of you across the pond. And comma will slow it back down. So 
See, I went too fast, but that's okay. All right, it's pretty much the same. We're good to go. Now you'll notice it still says that we have some burn time left. Uh, it had hit one and then went back up to two. Uh, I, I can't explain why it does that. It doesn't always do that. Sometimes it'll, it'll clear without any problems. In this case, it didn't. But it does say next, so we can move on without any further interruptions. Okay, so we're going to be placing a node so we can get these little shield icons there. Uh, I'm going to place it by the apoapsis. It doesn't matter where you place it, you're going to move it. Uh, this is the apoapsis, periapsis. It's the same as apogee and perigee if you're used to astrological terms instead of the scientific terms. Uh, obviously the highest point in your arc, the lowest point in your arc. The burn is going to be a prograde burn. It's going to be about 19 seconds. 19 to 21. I, I wouldn't go more than 21 for sure. Uh, I usually don't go more than 20, so I'll probably tweak that back a little bit. So then we'll drag it around. Put it right about there for the moment. I'm going to bring this burn down a little bit. We'll call it 20 seconds. I like to build this nice little buffer here. So what it wants is a separation less than five kilometers. If you're way out of reach, it'll go ahead and let you continue and then it'll make you fix it. Uh, if you're close, it'll make you fix it right now. So what we're going to do is we're going to move so that we're ahead of their ship and then we're just going to hold that position until they intersect. We'll let the, the ship's movement work for us. We can get a little closer. There we go. Alright, that's good enough. 2.9 kilometers. We'll hit next. We're going to go ahead and warp to here. This is a prograde burn, so we'll switch to prograde. We'll let it fix its orientation. All right, it's a 20 second burn, so we're going to start at minus 10. This time I will stop a little faster. Uh, if you get impatient, you'll end up screwing up like I did the first time, so don't get impatient. The closer you get, the slower you want it to be. Give it a little time to adjust again. I'd love to give it another boost, but then I'd overshoot again. Hit shift and give it a little more extra boost. All right, that's good. All right, so now what it wants us to do is get within 15 kilometers from that ship. We're going to go ahead and turn these off. We don't want to turn off. Oh well, we'll leave it alone. It did that to me yesterday too. I can't explain it. I don't know why. All right, so uh, we will be closer to about here. This will put us around somewhere between 100 and 200 uh, kilometers. It wants us to switch this to target and we're going to do a retrograde burn to slow down. We want to bring our speed 
uh, to under uh, 50 meters per second. Uh, 100, 170, that was pretty close. All right, so we'll go ahead and speed it up this way with the period or dot if you prefer. Once again, slow your uh, time warp down as you get closer so you don't overshoot your mark. All right, we are now at normal speed. We're in retrograde, set to target. And as soon as it says 14.99, I'm gonna hit Z. That was a little slow. I blinked and I missed it. You'll notice that little buffer that we put in there is disappearing. All right, I'm actually going to bring it down to 10 meters per second. Or below, obviously. Uh, and the reason, there's a reason for that. It'll make things easier on this next little bit. So we're going to go to this mode. We're going to switch to target. It wants us to get within five kilometers and then bring our speed to zero, which makes no sense because then it wants us to speed up again uh, and not go higher than 10 meters per second. Why not just continue from here? Oh well. It's all right. So we'll turn on RCS. H will give us our little forward thrust. You notice my handle is out of position. I'll fix that when we get closer. We'll call it 12 for now. Turn RCS back off. Put our handle in where we want it. Okay. Now in this position, if I hit J with the RCS on, I'll slide left. If I hit L, I'll slide right. Um, I and K are inverted, so up is down and down is up, but you can change that in key maps if you prefer. I'm not going to, I'm used to it, so go ahead and turn the RCS back off. We will speed up until we come close. Now, you'll notice it was sliding across the screen. See this little yellow marker? If you center that, you will actually stay pretty true. And if you hit one direction and it goes the wrong way, just tap the other direction. Let it sit for a moment, make sure it's stable. We'll turn RCS back off. We'll speed up time again. Now you'll notice that it's staying pretty stable. Okay, we are under four or under five kilometers. It wants us to come down to zero. So hit N. Now you could flip to anti-target. This one right here. And use your boosters to uh, slow down faster. But that's why I brought us down below 10 in the first place, so you're not wasting so much mono for plant. Uh, you notice as we're going slower, we've actually gone a little off course again. Okay, we'll slow down again.
it doesn't matter that you're not at 0.0, .0 meters per second as long as you're uh, 0.4 meters per second or lower it'll let you continue so now what's going to happen is we're going to bring our speed back up I usually take it to about 9 because as we adjust this position our speed tends to change in relation to the ship so it gives us a little buffer actually pretty much back on target. It's pretty centered. We'll go ahead and speed time after we turn off the RCS. Alright, so as we get closer to 100, we actually want to slow down. Uh, what will happen is, is if you hit 100 at, say, 9 meters per second, and then you start trying to slow down at the last possible second, while reading what they're telling you to do and trying to accomplish all that, you're going to run into the stranded. They don't appreciate that. So we're going to avoid that. We're going to slow down early. Alright, one meter per second will work. Let's tweak our position a little bit. Alright, we will turn off RCS, speed up time. Turn the RCS back on. We're going to bring it down to about point, well, actually we're going to bring it as close to zero as we can. Alright, good enough. Okay, so what it wants you to do, let's click ahead here, is we're going to open the shield and then control from here. Now, we can see their ship and we can see that we're aimed at the side of the ship. If we try to dock in this position, the magnetic coupler is going to swing the rear of our ship around. It'll try to connect, but the inertia will keep our ship moving and it'll break the connection and we'll go flinging off. It'll be bad. They did add a feature where if you're really close, it'll make some last minute uh, adjustments for you to straighten you out and help make sure that you connect. Before you had to be traveling between 0.4 and 0.6 uh, meters per second to hit hard enough to make that that connection otherwise it just kind of flung you away and it was really annoying. Now I actually did it at 0.1 and had no problem at all. It was, it was pretty cool. It was pretty cool. All right, so right now I'm kind of swinging around behind it. I don't want to swing around it. So we're going to adjust until we're staying right even with it, or at least close. That figures, okay. So I, I saw the little yellow marker and sometimes it disappears from the screen and doesn't want to cooperate, so I'm not worried about it. All right, so what we need to do is we need to move up to get above it. It does not require a lot of boost. You don't have to boost the entire time you're trying to go above it. Uh, the reason doing that would be bad is because then you have to go just as long in the other direction to stop yourself again. So we're going to avoid that. We just gave it a little boost. We're kind of pulling away a little bit, so we'll tap it forward. 
Uh, if we do all of this maneuvering while we're out here, we're less likely to bump the ship while we're trying to, you know, get in position. So just keep it about, you know, 90 to 100 and you'll be fine. I know this is painstakingly slow waiting for it to do it, but when you get impatient, you're going to spend more fuel than you need to. Then you're going to have to spend even more fuel than you need to to stop. Uh, you're going to overshoot, then you're going to have to spend even more fuel to, you know, get back in position. And so just give it a little tap, wait for it to happen, it'll be fine. If you want it to go faster, time warp. We are going to switch the camera to lock. Yeah, I like locked. All right. Now you don't have to get it, uh, you know, dead on straight while sitting like this because one, it's really hard to tell, you know, when you're far away from it. Uh, there is a docking uh, mode. Uh, you don't have to use it. It's up to you. I've never used it and it works just fine, so. Okay, we are going to stop it. Pretty good. Close enough. All right. So now we're pretty close to being in front of it. Uh, it's not perfect, but it's close enough. We're on target. So we're going to speed up just a hair. We'll wait till about 20, maybe 30. Uh, stop it there and slow her down. Do our final positioning, although we look pretty straight. We could probably dock just like this. We're a little low. But it's pretty close. Alright, so we'll just continue as is. Alright. We'll bring our speed down. Now you'll notice we are uh, at a slight angle, uh, but it is not so much that it's going to make any difference, and it's going to tweak itself as we're about to connect. Uh -huh. See? Beautiful. Alright, so technically you're done. You don't have to bring the Kerbals back, you don't have to bring the ship back, you don't even have to go back. It is a good idea to learn how. Your options are, as it explained before I closed it, we can transfer fuel to their ship, and hopefully both ships have enough fuel to get home. Risky. We didn't bring extra fuel. Or we can transfer their crew to our ship, and that's what we're going to do. So you select their ship, hit transfer, select our ship, Transfer theirs again, get the other guy, select our ship, and you're done with that part. Now before, there was a funny little thing where you had to make sure you clicked on our ship. There we go. Hit control from here, and then undock. If you didn't, you would end up in control of their ship and it wouldn't let you use the brackets to switch ships. But now you can use the brackets to switch ships. So if you do accidentally end up in control of their ship, don't fear. You won't have wasted all that time and you can still bring the Kerbals back. 
So we're going to turn on the RCS. We're going to give ourselves a little distance. Turn off RCS, switch to map mode, and we are going to do a retrograde burn. It doesn't really matter where you place this node either. So we are going to do it right about here. Oop. Retrograde burn. I want that to come in. All right, so now that we have this one, we're going to right click on that so that we can see the distance. You want that around 60 meters or kilometers, I should say. You want that around 60 kilometers. Uh, I honestly don't know why I'm not a rocket scientist, but that seems to be the go-to number that people you know, give online and it works. So, all right, we're under 60, we're good to go. It's an 18 second burn, so we'll start at minus nine. Turn on SAS switch to retrograde or maneuver if you prefer speed up time a little bit all right and then we will count it down all right our periapsis is under 60k we will land so we're going to Warp here. Okay, we are now entering Atmo. So, we don't want this still attached to us. Now, we could just do it right like this, in which case the uh, Go ahead and close the shield. In which case, the parachutes will already be primed and they will engage themselves. We could put this in its own stage, or we could just simply click on it and click decouple. Now, if our alignment was wrong and we decoupled that, we'd be in a bit of trouble. Because if we bounce off the atmosphere, we might not land. But as low as we are, even if we do bounce, it's actually going to do something like this. Or we'll continue to slow down um, while we're, you know, reaching the periapsis, and this will keep getting lower. This will keep getting lower, as you'll see. It's getting lower now. Uh, if we bounce, it'll come around, it'll hit Atmo again and start slowing down even more. Bounce, bounce. Each bounce, it'll get a little lower, a little lower, a little lower until finally it has no choice. It's going to land. Thank goodness, right? You'll notice our altitude is actually increasing. So that's exactly what happened. But now that we don't have that module, we can't change anything. So now we have to ride it out. Unfortunately, while we're in Atmo, we're limited to how fast we can go. When you hit about 70, you'll have to back it out and then uh, you can start speeding it up again. But then when it comes back in, it'll slow itself down. Until you hit Atmo, then you'll speed it up again. You have to keep waiting until your ship is above 70. And then you can speed it back up. And then it's going to come around and slow back down. And it's going to be like that until you finally... I think if it's below 50, it'll finally stop. Maybe on this run. We'll give it a shot. So as you get further out, you just keep tapping the, uh, the period. 
this little speed trap. We are coming in for a landing. Now that we're down, what were you supposed to do? It's a good question. Okay, so we're going to simulate uh, having picked them up. We're going to bring this back down to under 60. Good enough. We will warp to about here. All right, now that we're relatively close to that mark, we're three minutes out. We'll go ahead and speed it up a little bit. We'll say about two minutes out. We were close enough to do the following. All right. So we're still in retrograde. All you would do is bring your thrust up. Right there is pretty good. Uh, with it be with the periapsis being, you know, forty or less you're going to land. There's no two ways about it. So now, even if we do come in here and decouple, we will land. All right, folks, I hope you enjoyed the video as much as I enjoyed making it today. I hope you learned a few things, especially from the mishap that I included in this video. If you have any questions, any problems that you're having in the game, any suggestions for content you'd like to see me make, leave comments below. If you liked the video, hit that like button. No, 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 no. The, the other one. The, 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 the thumbs up. Yeah, that's the one. Thank you. I appreciate that. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button if you'd like to see more from me. And hit that share button if you think this video will help any of your Kerbal Playing friends. Uh, that's all I've got for today. This is Sire Burke signing off, and don't forget, bring your Kerbals home safe.